Hello, Indiana Fever fans, WNBA fans, sports fans. We welcome you into our brand new podcast, Inside Fever Basketball. I'm play-by-play announcer Pat Boylan. We'll be taking you behind the scenes throughout the year, bi-weekly, inside Gainbridge Fieldhouse, behind the scenes of Indiana Fever Basketball with some exclusive interviews that you can only catch right here. This will be an audio podcast as well as a video one. So if you are listening on our audio podcast channels, know that this interview exists as well on YouTube, on the Indiana Fever's YouTube page. And if you're watching here on YouTube, subscribe also on our podcast channel and you can hear this in audio form. And we figured that it would be perfect to start our premier episode number one here and get things kick-started with the number two overall pick in the WNBA draft, Indiana Fever's own Nalissa Smith. First of all, let's go back to draft day for you. Um, you had a quote just a few days, I think, before the draft. I'm still slept on if you don't think I'm number one off the bat. So take me take me back to draft day because getting drafted is a goal for any athlete and you got to hear your name very early in this draft. What was that dynamic like getting to fulfill a life dream but in a way perhaps put a chip on your shoulder? Um, well, of course, the whole draft process, at the end of the day, it's a blessing. You know, a lot of people don't get to go through that journey. A lot of people didn't get to be at the draft and experience the whole thing. So I took it as a blessing. But also, you got to, in a competitive mindset, like, I feel like I'm always in my head going to think I'm second to nobody. So, I mean, it just puts a chip on your shoulder and just allows you to just motivate yourself. It allows you to go harder in every way. How would you describe that moment with your family and friends watching what I assume is a, is a long time dream for you become fulfilled? Oh, it was a great moment, you know, being around the people that you started it with. It just it was just a great moment seeing everybody happy and smiling. I want to go back uh, to your Baylor career here for a little bit, perhaps even before that. At, at what point in your Baylor career do you feel like you looked at the WNBA and said, this dream's realistic. This is something that. I realistically can achieve here? Um, I definitely thought that in high school, like in high school and in, in AAU, I was like, I could definitely, with the support that I had and the people around me, I definitely knew that I could take it to the next level. I just needed like to, you know, brush up on a couple of things. Your freshman year at Baylor, you're a pivotal part of a, of a championship team. Um, your senior year, you are in the National Player of the Year conversation. Uh, however, it ended in some disappointment for you in the tournament. Take us through your senior year, the excitement of it, the success of it, but ultimately ending in a way that, does it leave a little bit of a sour taste in your mouth? Uh, no, it was a great experience. I love Baylor. We accomplished so much in four years. So honestly, like, I can't go back to Baylor and say, dang, I wish I would have did this, except for, like you said, went further my senior year. But I mean, we had so much adversity at Baylor. We went through coaching changes. We had a whole new team. We played a whole season with seven players. Like, it, it was rough. But honestly, I mean, I feel like if we went back, we could have, we definitely could have did it. You average 22 points, 11 rebounds. You're in that National Player of the Year conversation. What to you elevated your game from junior to senior year? Like 18 and eight my junior year, I knew I had to take it up a notch because we're playing the same teams in conference over and over again. So of course they're gonna scout you differently. So I just knew I had to bring something new to the table and that's what it was, whether it was rebounding harder or um, improving my outside game. It was just always bringing something new to the table every year. You had a unique situation in that you had a coaching change uh, mid-season or mid-college career, um, especially at a program like Baylor that had had a ton of stability. But it was Nikki Collin, uh, somebody who has coached in the WNBA, who knows what it takes uh, to succeed at the level that you're currently in now. When you saw that she was taking over, um, I guess what was your initial reaction as to how that could help you as a player? Oh, uh, it was a good reaction. I mean, for a while we were trying to just see who was going to be the coach and when Nikki got announced to be the coach I knew I was going to stay right then and there just coming from a coach that has WNBA like experience she knows about the league she talks to the coaches she knows what you need to get to the next level so that's why I really like fed off of Nikki to uh you know help me get to the next level how impactful do you think she was in helping elevate your game to be perhaps a little bit more of a pro ready game uh, I, I think it was huge. We ran a lot of pro sets. Uh, we spread the floor out a lot more. 
Whereas in the last couple of years, it was more like, you know, stagnant. But playing with Coach Nikki, you know, she let me bring the ball up. She let me, you know, come off of pick and rolls, doing a lot of things like outside of my comfort zone that you see in the league. How do you see your game translating? And this is kind of a tough question. We're just a couple weeks into camp here. But how do you see your game translating at the pro level? Um, just, I feel like the four position is one of the most important positions. Just being so versatile, you know, you can do a lot more things on the floor. So I feel like in my position, you know, improving the three point shot, improving ball handling, just little things. Of course, defensively, you know, guarding guards. I feel like that's going to help me a lot at this level. The three point shot is also something that you started to add more and more to your repertoire as your college career went on. You took 27 three pointers in your first three years. You took 35 uh, in your senior year. How much is that part of your game going forward? How much of it still is a work in progress for you? I mean, I'm working on it every day. I mean, I have amazing coaching staff that's helping me stay in the gym, you know, shooting 100 threes a day or after every practice where I can improve that. Do you feel like that was kind of the next step for your game was maybe stepping a few feet out and knocking down that three-point shot just at the collegiate level? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I feel like once I get the three consistently, I'm going to be a lot harder to guard. Whenever somebody talks to you, whenever you do a story, whenever you do an interview, a, a couple of things that really stand out to me, you seem extremely hardworking and it seems like you constantly are able to find a chip on your shoulder, something that motivates you. Where does that come from? Just the will to win, honestly. Like, I feel like a lot of times, like, in my life, I've, you know, been counted out. So, you know, just always wanting to, you know, take my game to the next level. Always wanting to be, you know, recognized as, like you said, that player that works hard, that player that wants to be on top. So just, you know, never com becoming complacent. Like, I always just want to, you know, be at the top. Is, has that always been natural for you? Has that been a skill that you've developed, that kind of hardworking mindset? Yeah, I feel like when you're competitive, it just naturally comes. Just, you know, when you want to win, that competitiveness is always going to be right there with you with that chip on your shoulder. A quote that you had that really stuck out to me is you said, anytime you lose, you've got to focus on the film. You've got to watch it over and over. You've got to eat it up. You don't always hear players talk about wanting to watch film, and yet that seems like not only something you want to do, but something that's vital as it relates to you as a player. Um, what about film kind of helps shape you and, and why is that so important to you? Um, honestly, I love watching film just because, you know, like as a basketball player, when you do a move, it's always going to be stuck in the back of your head when you miss like that shot, whether, whether it was like, oh, I should have drove on that play. I should have just shot this or I, I could have made something different out of that play. So when you go back and watch that game film and it's like, you know how to create off of that off of that bucket now it helps you so much the next game because now you see how people are going to play you so now I could change up how I'm going to like score off of that so that's why I watch film so much. This is of course a Indiana Fever team that's a part of a bigger Pacers sports and entertainment franchise and the Pacers just went through a lot of changes in this last year and one of them was bringing in a player like Tyrese Halliburton. Do you know much if at all about Tyrese yet? I don't know. Because he tweeted about you that's why I asked and, and did you did you see his tweet? No I he tweeted on draft night, uh, Tyrese Halliburton said, uh, this is a great pick. Nalissa's tough, excited to watch her with the Indiana Fever. So I guess, what, is it, what does it mean to you? you? You get a lot of accolades, but when it comes from um, somebody in the NBA, somebody who's on the Pacers, who's going to be sharing facilities like this with you? Oh, that's huge. I mean, I really wish I would have seen it. I definitely would have showed love back because, I mean, that's what it's about. It's about a culture. So, you know, when the men's team is supporting you and the women's team, it just builds, you know, a culture in this, like, environment and that helps so much. He talked about Tyrese wanting to come to games and, and wanting to watch uh, the WNBA and, and you as even just in a couple of weeks into the WNBA uh, players you're such pioneers for the game like it's something that I think just comes naturally to so many of you to help grow the game at this level. Um, what does it mean to you to, to see somebody like Tyrese that uh, sees how entertaining, how enjoyable this game is and that wants to be along uh, for the ride with you guys? Oh, that's huge. Like, it's super big for us. You know, any support is great support. So especially coming from someone with such a big name and big foundation, it's going to help grow this league so much more. It stands to reason that 
this three or four week stretch that you're in the midst of, uh, when you're looking back at all this one day, it, it might be the craziest of your life, craziest of your career. I mean, you go from NCAA tournament to uh, the draft process to flying to a, a city you didn't know you'd be in uh, previously, and now you're a couple weeks into camp. How would you describe all of this, this whirlwind of the last few weeks? Honestly, a blessing. Like, I, I would have never pictured, you know, like two, three weeks ago, actually, that like, I would have flew to New York for the drive then one day after I'd be in Indiana. Like, it's just, it happens so fast that when, like, you go to sleep at night, you could finally, like, just breathe a little bit and it's like, dang, I'm really in the WNBA because, like, you know, it's, it's so fast. Like, you don't even get to, like, really recognize, like, dang, this really happened. So it's finally hitting me, like, I'm really in the WNBA. It's funny you bring up sleep. I was going to ask you, can you get ample sleep during all this time just with the amount of movement you have, but also the excitement, I would imagine, as well? Uh, nah, I, well, I personally definitely get my sleep. Whenever I got time, I'm asleep. <laughs> so take me through camp th so far. Has it met your expectations? What's it been like? Oh, camp has been extremely fun. Just so many different personalities, so much, you know, just like joy. Like I met the coaching staff and it's just like, it's like a family environment. Like I'm talking to assistants every day. I'm talking to the head coach all the time. Like it's just constant communication that like some people didn't get in college. So, you know, when you come to the WNBA, you wouldn't think that you're going to get like so much, you know, like love and support. And it's just been great here. Your head coach, Mary Ann Stanley, will be inducted here very soon into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Lynn Dunn is in the Hall of Fame. You look up in the rafters, somebody who really helped make this franchise what it is, Tamika Catchings, is in the Hall of Fame. Um, I know you've only been here for a couple of weeks, but what's it like to have that sort of high-level expertise around you here as you get your WNBA career started? Um, it's great. You're surrounded by so many leaders, so you could always just go to a sideline and get great advice from somebody. So just having so many great people around, you're not missing out on no advice. You mentioned the family type of atmosphere. How would you describe Marianne Stanley as a coach and, and how you, you've gone from three different coaches here in only a little over a year. How's that transition gone for you? Um, it's been great for me. She was very welcoming. Like, as soon as I came in, she, you know, introduced herself and we talked about, you know, our plans for this year. Like, many people aren't approachable like that. So for her to, you know, come to me and just, you know, just talk, like, it, it just takes a chip off your shoulder. Like, you can just relax because it's like, you got people that care about you here. You went to Baylor, one of the premier basketball programs in the country. Uh, things like facilities are, are top notch at, at a program like that. When you come here uh, into the WNBA and you've had some time to be around, well, a facility like this one, but for those who can't see off camera, there are all sorts of film rooms and a, and a brand new locker room and a WNBA only practice court. And you've been working out at a second facility uh, as well with the team. What are your initial impressions of the facility, the area around? here that you'll call home you'll call your job um it's a great area like i said it's so many resources here like you said a nice film room great locker room like weight room is great the court it's just it's a great environment and like you said coming from baylor i mean that's a great environment too so it's just always leveling up it's been great you haven't necessarily had the chance i'm sure to see you know any other wnba franchises but um what, what we hear around here is this is you know as good as it is in the wnba how important is that type of thing for somebody like you who's still growing mentally, physically, who's still developing uh, as, as a player, as a person? Um, it's great. I mean, just to always have, like I said, the resources around here where I could walk across the street and just, you know, go lift weights or go get shots up. I mean, it's great. It's going to help my game grow a lot. You are the number two pick, but with you are numerous other rookies who were drafted. Uh, four first round draft picks, the first time that's ever happened in WNBA history. Another uh, pick at number 20 in Destiny Henderson, who I think a lot of people thought was going in the first round. So take me through uh, what it's been like to be a rookie with such a big rookie class like this one. They make it a lot easier, honestly. You know, you're around so many people that are trying to learn just like you, and we're all in the same boat where we're trying to learn and, you know, just take our game to the next level. So, you know, you have people to lean on that are in the same situation as you. How would you describe the camaraderie, the relationship, the chemistry between you and the other rookies? Uh, I describe it as good. You know, we all talk about practice. We all go talk about how we still trying to finish school. Like, we're all in the same boat. Like, 
we could all relate to each other. I think one thing that really stood out to me about the draft this year is just the different skill sets that are brought in. I mean, yours, uh, the number two pick, it's, it's obvious, but you have uh, Emily Angsler, who is, you know, a defensive stalwart and, and, a, and a good shooter. And then Lexi Hole is her own type of player and, 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 you know, down to 10 and up to 20. I mean, everybody kind of has a really different skill set. Um, how do you think all of that meshes together? I think it'll help Indiana grow tremendously, honestly. I feel like we could help be like the missing pieces that were on this team from the previous years. That number 10 pick, somebody you know very well. Uh, you went through just what I'm sure was overwhelming excitement to watch yourself drafted number two in the WNBA draft, and then your experience watching a teammate go just eight picks later. What was that like in the moment? Oh, I didn't even know she had came to Indiana and we were in media because I had to go through media after all the uh, like the picks and stuff. So when they had told me, I was just like, what are the odds like that happens? It was just so crazy how we ended up on the same team. What was your relationship with Queen at, at Baylor and how helpful is that to have somebody that you know well along for the ride here from the get go? Um, it's good. Like I said, you always have someone that you can relate to, someone you could talk to all the time. So I've known Queen for a while. As you go through training camp here, I mean, what's it been like with you and with her and, and kind of going through practices at the next level? I mean, do you, do you ever sometimes kind of look at each other and go, you know, wow, we're here, we're doing this, uh, but at the next level? Uh, I mean, it's been good. Uh, a lot of the sets that we run in Indiana, we ran at Baylor. So we're kind of like, you know, kind of one up on everything. So every time they call something, we just be like, oh, this is that. Oh, this is that. Because we already kind of know the plays. Kind of the, the terminology is different, but the plays are kind of similar. Right, exactly. I want to ask you about Kelsey Mitchell. Um, um, she's somebody who was just like you, a number two overall pick. She's uh, from the 2018 draft. This will be her fifth year. But in the couple of weeks you've had to play with Kelsey, to be around Kelsey, what are your experiences? Oh, she's a great person. I mean, Kelsey's a type. She walk in the locker room. She's always like, what's up, y'all? Like, she just has great energy, great presence. And I feel like that's that's good, especially for rookies, because a lot of people, like, once you come to the WNBA, you like that fish in a big pond. So when someone that's been in the league for a while just confronts you just like you, just like them, like, it makes you feel at home. What Kelsey's done in her WNBA career is undeniable, even though she's still relatively young in the league. She's been top 10 in scoring last couple of years, top five in one of those seasons. Um, but sometimes I think she has struggled with just how much defenses can focus on her, how much attention she gets night in and night out. Do you feel like that's something that you can help with, be another kind of dynamic playmaker on offense, take some pressure off Kelsey, and maybe that allows Kelsey to elevate her own game? Absolutely. I feel like once I get established on this team and they establish roles and uh, people can start showcasing their talent, it's going to take a lot of the pressure off of Kelsey where she has someone she could pass to and like someone she can count on to score the ball instead of having double teams or hard pressure the whole game. And then likewise for you, you know, what's it going to be like on the floor knowing you've got a dynamic guard like her that you can run pick and roll with, you can run pick and pop with? I mean, how do you see your games meshing? Oh, I see it great. We should be a good, a great one-two combo, you know. Like, I hit her on the drift. She hits me on the road. Like, I just feel like we're going to mesh well together. Have you set goals for your rookie season yet? Uh, rookie of the year. Rookie of the year. Straight up. That's it. Yep. What's it going to take for you to get there? It's going to take, you know, me to play hard. You know, stay true to myself. We do what I do best. Not come in the league and just try to change everything up, so... I feel like I should be able to accomplish that. Do you feel coming into an environment like this, a franchise that is building, um, that this is kind of the perfect scenario for somebody like you? I mean, you're very likely, I don't want to speak for Marianne Stanley, you might just be around the corner, but you're very likely going to get some serious playing time here right off the bat. I mean, do you feel like that scenario is, is one that's kind of perfect for you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Any way that I can help a team, you know, win more games than they did last year just by, like, quality minutes and scoring in defense, then I definitely want to do that. Whether you talk to Lynn, Marianne, and numerous players, the goal, it just seems to be improvement. And to focus on the day-to-day -day kind of aspect of improvement. Is that how you see it? Is there a tangible goal for you as a team, or is it simply – 
When we're talking at the end of the year, you undoubtedly want to be better than you were when we're talking now. Absolutely. I feel like team goals, personally, I feel like do better than you did last year or do better than you did yesterday. It's always just leveling up as you continue playing. And then personally, it's just bringing something new to the to Indiana, just helping this team, you know, like I said, improve every single year. We've heard Marianne Lynn talk about your versatility. They feel like you could play some five, play some three. Do you feel like four is your natural position, at least as you begin your rookie season? Yeah, for sure. Or wherever they want to put me at. <laughs> what about the four do you think suits your game well? I feel like with the four, you could be a lot more versatile, whether, you know, you could get it out in transition and, you know, shoot the transition three. Um, you could post up. I just feel like the four is a lot more versatile. The four also has numerous WNBA stars on other teams, to name a few, Brianna Stewart, uh, John Quell Jones, Neka Gumake, Candace Parker. What do you think about when you hear those names and know that that's your opponent this year? <laughs> I mean, those are the greatest players. And, you know, it, it took them something to get there. So, I mean, you, they had to start somewhere just like I did. You know, they had to guard some of the best players when – when they were in the league. So, I mean, you got to start somewhere. Uh, we're going to see how it goes the first couple of games. Did you grow up looking to uh, up to any of those players? I mean, some of them are younger, but uh, Candace Parker has been in the league for <laughs> most of your life. Yeah, Candace Parker is my favorite player, and now my favorite player is Brianna Stewart. So, <laughs> we're going to see how those games go. Imagine, uh, like, what that scenario is going to be like for you. You're taking the floor, maybe opening tip or at the first free throw, uh, first offensive possession, whatever it is, and and – You've got the ball and standing between you and the rim is Candace Parker. Like what that's going to be like? No, nah, yeah, it's going to be crazy. I'm not the type of person that's going, you know, not act like a fan. I'm definitely going to like get a jersey after the game. <laughs> but like it sounds like your personality, just your mindset, though, um, you're going to get a jersey after the game, maybe a little bit of a fan, but like on the floor, that's just another opponent. Is that kind of how you view it? Oh, absolutely. We both trying to win the same game. So, you know, we could we could talk after the game. But, you know, during the 40 minutes, you know, you got to play. We talked a little bit about your three point shot earlier. When you imagine your career 10 years from now, how big of a part is the three point shot? Do you imagine to you? Um, I feel like it'll be huge. I'm not going to let it overshadow it, the rest of my game, but I feel like adding that to my game is just going to free up a lot more space for everybody else. Do you think that for you to reach your ultimate potential, that that'll have to be a significant part of your game? The three and on-ball defense, for sure. You're coming in to a franchise, as we talked about, that's struggled the last couple of years in terms of wins on the floor. You're the number two pick. I mean, you're immediately getting the attention. You're our first guest here on the podcast. Do you feel any pressure? Nah, I, honestly, I don't really feel pressure. I just have so much confidence in myself as a basketball player that like, if I compete, I feel like I can hang with anybody. Like I'm gonna put the work in, of course, you know, just to, you know, get the product out. Like, This is a team game and, you know, nobody's sitting here suggesting that the future of the Fever franchise is solely reliant on you. But that said, um, it does seem like three, four, five years down the road, um, your level of contribution here is going to play a massive role in how much success the Fever have. You said that you don't really feel a whole lot of pressure, but do you feel excitement, um, intrigue to know that, you know, that much is on you and, and that's what the franchise views you as? Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm definitely excited. Um, I'm just excited, you know, to, to get out there and play. Like, I've never, of course, I never played in the WNBA before, so I'm just excited to experience everything that comes with it and just to experience it with this team. Like, it's going to be exciting. I want to ask you about your family. Uh, your brother, you said uh, he and his friends are easily the most recognizable at Baylor games. Uh, they wear the number one jersey. They always uh, are enthusiastic and support uh, the student section. He was an athlete himself. Uh, what does family mean to you? What, is it, what does it mean to you to have a brother who is as involved in, in your career as he is? Um, my family is everything to me. Like literally everything I do, I base it off of my family. And like my brother's like my best friend. Like he literally doesn't miss games unless he has work and he stays in Nashville. So now he's like four hours away. So I'm pretty sure he'll be at every home game. So just having that is just, it, it amps you up more. It makes you want to go harder when you have people that believe in you so much. 
when did you see that your dad had hit the half court shot? <laughs> um, I saw that at halftime. We was coming out from halftime and everybody was showing me the video. I'm like, of course, like just of course. <laughs> what was your conversation like with your dad after the game? You know, I don't want to say he stole the spotlight from you, but like for one game, he might have stole the spotlight from you. Uh, nah, I, I love that moment for him. My dad, like he, he feed, like my family feeds off of competitiveness. So when I heard they got the opportunity to do the little shooting and stuff I was like I know he's gonna make it so like we would be in the car and I just hear him re-watching the video all the time like he just loves it how much do you think your competitive nature comes from him oh it comes from my whole family like we can go bowling and we're gonna start arguing because they're so competitive like we can play uno like we're just we're a competitive family and I really feel like that's what really like made me who I am today is just how competitive my whole family is is there a Thanksgiving family football game and if so I imagine that that would be maybe something that not all of us would want to be a part of <laughs> yeah we used to always play basketball in the front yard so it's definitely like my whole family is competitive was watching an interview with you recently and you shared that painting has become a recent hobby hobby of yours. How did that come to be? Quarantine. I was so bored in quarantine. Like they used to like in my neighborhood where I'm from, they used to put like little lids on the rim. So you couldn't even go outside and shoot. So like, I don't know. I just saw the little paint by number and I had started painting and it took up most of my time, which I actually liked because rather than just sitting on the couch board, I was like painting stuff. So it was cool. What were you painting? Um, I started with like like landscape stuff, and then I po uh, painted like a, a African American painting. I just finished that one. And is this something that you still kind of have as as part of your repertoire? Kind of, uh, does it does it help you relax from a, from your basketball career? Uh, now I ain't, now I don't got time. <laughs> but like when I get some time on my hands, I might finish something. But. I usually be sleep now. Well, basketball will take up plenty of, of your next few months, especially this condensed WNBA season. But uh, when you're not painting, uh, when you're not on the floor, what are your hobbies? Like, wh what do you like doing? Um, I like to cook. I like to just, I talk to my family a lot. Uh, I like to go bowling too. Like, I'm starting to get a lot better at bowling. So, and I'll be on the PS5 and that's it. What do you play on the PS5? I'm starting to get better at 2K and I play Call of Duty. Okay. Uh, how cool has it been for you to see the WNBA featured in, in some of these basketball games? You talk about growing the league. I mean, that's a big one there. You know how many kids and, and, and adults <laughs> play play 2K. Now, yeah, I'm hyped. I finally get to get my little face scan. I get to, I'm about to play with my player for sure the whole time. I'm gonna Amp them up. What do you think your rating should be? 99. <laughs> <laughs> so when you look at it, if, it, if it's anything 99, out of the 99, are you going to start having issues? Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to tweet at Ronnie2k. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can go into like the settings and just kind of fix yourself it. and make <laughs> yourself a 99. Um, let's close with this. This season will be a success for you from a personal perspective or a team perspective if what happens? If we all collectively have the same goal and that's to win, you know, you got to sacrifice individual goals for team goals. And that's the only way that we're going to win this season. How do you feel like that mindset um, will help the team? I feel like it'll be huge. Like if everybody puts to the side, like once they score, looking at the scoreboard rather than just, you know, get back on defense, get a stop, keep running it up. Then we just we're going to keep running it up. We're going to start winning a lot more games. You've got the preseason coming up. You'll have uh, your season opener on the road in D.C. Your first home game is going to be May 8th, uh, not too far from where we are right now here at Gainbridge Fieldhouse. You've played in sold out arenas and in massive games in your career numerous times. But what do you think it's going to be like the first time you're taking the floor as a member of the Indiana Fever with the Fever fans, many of them watching and listening here, cheering you on? Uh, hopefully it's going to be a great experience. I heard this is a basketball state, so I just want to see everybody, you know, come out and support. Like, we're going to have a great year this year. Well, Nalissa, we very much appreciate the time. You have a ton on your plate here in these first couple of weeks, and we appreciate you making time for us. Best of luck here as camp continues underway and as you get into your rookie season. Thank you. All right, that'll wrap up the first episode of Inside Fever Basketball. Be out on the lookout for episodes bi-weekly every couple of weeks or so, both on our YouTube channel and on our podcast channel. First episode is in the books with Alyssa Smith. I'm Pat Boylan, and we will talk to you soon on Inside Fever Basketball.